All right, welcome everybody. We're going to do some new Unix commands today. So you guys all know the CD command, you know the LS command, maybe you know LS-L, maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you do, if you don't, well, LS-L will show you what are called Unix permissions here. Uh, the first three are for the user. Uh, that's me, W. Kearney is the user. So I have read permission, write permission, and execute permission on yeah, basically everything. Uh, things that are executable, I have execute permission on. Things that are te uh, like test.cc here, I do not have execute permission on. Uh, people that are in my group, group W. Kearney, which is just me, uh, nobody else is in it, so we can kind of ignore the next three. But for you guys, you're all in group student. So if you want to make something that is readable, writable, or executable for your fellow students, then you can set these permissions in the middle here. And if it let me select it, my goodness. Uh, there we go. The three in the middle there are for your group, and then the last three are for everybody else. And so you'd see that uh, basically, yeah, almost pretty much nothing in my directory can even be read by you guys. So if I were to like become um, day and I wanted to CD into the directory for my professor, I, I can't, right? They do not have, uh, they do not have permissions to go into it. Now, if you were to go into the slash temp slash noon directory, which is where we're going to be putting our work today, because what we're going to be doing today is you guys are going to be writing bad code. And the bad code you write, you're going to put into the slash temp slash noon directory. So if I was, for example, uh, become uh, Olson, uh, and I started to work on a new thing, I would create a file called olson.cc. And inside of this file, you're going to say the purpose of the code, you're going to give a sample sample run, you know, showing inputs and outputs. And then you're going to write, write bad code, write bad code here. Yep. Uh, you're going to, you're going to write a bad program, you know, all these debugging things that we've been doing. Um, CD temp noon, uh, vim, galvin.cc, all these debugging things we're doing. There's a <laughs> yeah, CN right here with a C1N, right? So uh, there's there's compilation errors, there's logic errors uh, all over the place. The C out's going the wrong way. You guys will get extra credit for writing a excellent uh, debugging thing. You're gonna make debugging uh, problems for your friends. And uh, in the first hour of this class, you guys are gonna spend that time creating a masterpiece of debugging uh, nightmares for your fellow students. And no, uh, don't just, you know, like, you know, just type random, you know, text. That's, that's boring, all right? So after you've got your uh, Olson.cc done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, uh, Uh, then let's pretend that I just finished writing a terrible thing, right? Just make sure again that you have uh, the purpose of the program, right? And the other stuff in there. Once you're done writing it, you're going to use the CP command. The CP stands for copy. You're going to copy olson.cc into temp uh, noon like that. And then what you will notice is that um, other people aren't going to be able to read that file. If you look over here, you can see that Olson has read and write permissions. Come on, let me select an individual character. There we go. So Olson can read and write this file. Everybody in the student group can read it. And then other people on the server can't view it at all, right? So if I hop back into my own account and CD into the account, if I were to try reading his file, I get a permission denied there at the bottom of the screen. And so what we're going to be doing today is everybody's going to be uploading uh, copies of their uh, horrible, horrible... Uh, debugging code into this directory together, and you have to make them all world readable. Not world world writable. If you make them world writable, then other people can come in and edit your code, which you don't want. You want them to have to copy it into their into their own directory. Okay. And so, how you set permissions in Unix is using a program called Schmod. Schmod means change the mode of a file. The mode is the permissions. I don't think it's a great name, but you know whatever. And so. There are three different groups like we talked about. There's the user, me. Uh, there's the group, which is student for you guys, or Debbie Kearney for me, and other is everybody else. And so the format for the Chmod command is I can say grant, uh, let me make a file here, touch Debbie Kearney.cc. 
ls-l shows you permissions. Uh, so right now, none of you guys would be able to read this file. So if I wish to grant permissions, I would say chmod everybody, that's me, you, my group, everything. Or if I wanted to be more verbose, you go. But A is the same as you go. Um, in other words, everybody, all, everybody has read access on wkerny.cc. Okay, so now watch what happens. Everybody now can read that font. And that's what you guys need to do. So you're going to upload it, and then you're going to do a chmod. Everybody may read that font. Um, if you accidentally set too many permissions, like some students did this, uh, now, guess what? Uh, everybody can read, <laughs> can read and write to that file. That's not good. So if you want to remove a permission uh, using chmod, then you can use minus. So you could say everybody loses write permission to wkerny.cc, but now I can't write to it either. So uh, you have to be careful with this. So you could say something like uh, the user equals read write permissions on wkerny.cc and uh, others have just read permissions. Uh, or if you want to be really fancy, there's actually numerical uh, permissions that you do like 744. Uh, 744 means uh, read, write, execute, read, and write. The execute bit counts as one, the write bit counts as two, and the read bit counts as four. And so if you add together read, write, and execute, that's seven, and then read for group and read for other. So well, I, I guess I don't want execute permissions. So uh, do, 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 do. I'll set the mode to 644. And so now you will see that is the permissions you want. So. If you want to do it the super pro awesome way of doing it and make sure your permissions are just right, chmod644, you know, olson.cc, lamar.cc, whatever. And then that will set the permissions properly on the file. Then after the hour is up and everybody's uploaded all the, all the files and, and made everything uh, uh, correctly readable by everybody, then you're gonna download a file uh, of your choice uh, from that directory and, and you're gonna debug it. Uh, but at that point, we're going to pause and I'm going to have a lecture on debuggers on GDB. I'm going to give you a short lecture on GDB and learn, we're going to learn how to, how to do debugging. And, um, and then you're going to de debug the, whatever, whatever file you copy. So if I wanted to copy, uh, temp noon, um, loxamana to my current directory, I'm in my current home directory right now. So I could copy his file to the current directory I'm in, which is dot. So dot stands for the current directory in Unix. Tilde would also work because tilde is your home directory as well. Either way it works. So now I could vim loxamana.cc and see uh, we got compilation bugs in here, runtime bugs galore, and, uh, and we'll go through how to debug this in an hour or so, okay? Um, as always, I this is something I like kind of hammer on you guys that you, you really need to know how to use Unix. The daily quiz for today is going to be um, partly on Unix, partly on GDB. And this tutorial, I, I hype as much as I can. Uh, at the start of the semester, I told you, you know, read to release tutorial two. Uh, that covers things like copying files, moving files, deleting files, you know, like the basics you need uh, to just operate within Unix. Um, but today, like we were working on permissions and things like that. So I would just, you know, it's tutorial six worth it. Yeah. That's, it's all kind of useful. Uh, I mean, honestly, like if you, if you're serious about being a computer science major, you need to know Unix. Like one of my students, I, I talked to him for an hour yesterday. He's at Santa Cruz now and everything's on Unix and it's all shell scripting and piping and redirection and. Uh, command line arguments and, and all this kind of stuff over there. And uh, if you if you never take the time to go, these tutorials don't take long to go through. Like they really don't. It's like an hour or two of your life. You're just going to hamstring yourself. It's like if you don't know what dot means, you know, you're just going to hamstring yourself, your entire computer science career. So I'm going to encourage you guys by giving you a Unix quiz today. Um, you know, so... You know, I can't force you to read this, but highly recommend it. All of these things are incredibly, incredibly useful. They will make you bigger and stronger and more physically fit. So um, 
Uh, and if you know Unix, it's worth a $5,000 pay differential. So people who know Unix versus not knowing Unix on average make $5,000 a year more um, for the rest of their lives. So there's that too. It's, it's worth an hour of your life, uh, especially considering how much like your next two years here are all on Unix. And then if you transfer to uh, one of the, um, the colleges like Santa Cruz and San Diego and things like that, where everything's on a Unix server, yeah, you got you to gotta know all these commands, how to copy files, how to set permissions, how to uh, delete a file, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, if you guys understand what we're going to do now, we're going to do lab time now for an hour, and then I'm going to lecture in an hour. Okay. What's the website called? I, uh, I think it tells you every time we log in. <laughs> uh, let me log in again. Right here. Every time you log in, the hyperlink is is posted for you. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot we could talk about with Unix, but that's just kind of like what you need to know for today's lab time. Okay. And if you do a great job making a fun and interesting debugging puzzle, you will get extra credit for it. I also put up a couple other extra credit points that are up on the announcement section on Canvas for you guys to do if it entertains you. I'm going to stop this recording now. I will be back in an hour.